praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome to the Sunrise with Jesus. Friends, how many of you are counting the days to Easter? How many of you are tired of your abstinence and your fasting? Well, friends, this is one constant that is given to us by the church. Sacrifices or mortification of the flesh. And today we're going to see how do we understand the necessity of sacrifices? How do we appreciate the value of suffering? There is no victory without a battle. And a victorious Christian life is achieved by one who chooses to remain in the battle, the battle where we see the flesh and the spirit in conflict. Time and time again, the word of God tells us that the flesh opposes the spirit and the spirit opposes the flesh and it continues to exhort us, put to death the deeds of the flesh, mortify the flesh. So what is the flesh? The flesh is the voice, that little voice that constantly suggests to us a way of comfort, a way to anesthetize our existence. That little voice that tells you, why don't you have just one more piece of chocolate? And then you give in and you say, yes, just one more piece and I will be happy. And when you take that one more piece of chocolate and it has melted in your mouth and the taste has kind of died down and then the flesh says, maybe you need just one more piece of chocolate. It is the flesh that speaks to you early in the morning when you wake up and the alarm rings, the flesh says, why don't you sleep for just five more minutes? Snooze the alarm. The next time it rings, you can wake up. You still have time. And that's what you keep doing. So the flesh is that voice that deceives us in a way, assuring us that that little bit of comfort we grab, that little bit of comfort that we grab, even at the cost of the decisions we made, would make life more pleasurable. And this is why the Word of God tells us that we need to be very alert and put to death neglect and starve the voice of the flesh. How do we wage this battle against the flesh? Friends, guess what? We are already armored. We are already on that battlefield and that battlefield is called suffering. That armor that we have is in fact suffering. The sword in your hand is suffering. It is through suffering that we can put to death the deeds of the flesh. Because the flesh, as we know, can only deceive us and lead us to a place where we completely are dead to the voice of the Holy Spirit. The voice of the Holy Spirit leads us to life and joy and everything that is truly nourishing and life-giving. Now, St. Peter writes, you read this in the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 4, he says, Christ suffered in the flesh. And therefore, since Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same attitude. Because one who has suffered in the flesh has broken with sin. The one who has suffered in the flesh has broken with sin. So St. Peter is telling us that when you suffer, you actually are set free from sin. And what is sin? Sin is separation from God. So when I choose to suffer, when I accept suffering, I am freed from that separation and I become close, one with God. And he continues to say, he says, because suffering in the flesh allows you to spend the rest of your life on the works of the Spirit, doing the will of God and not simply being a slave to the commands of the flesh. Later on, 
we see far more beautiful words on suffering as St. Peter writes in 1 Peter 4, 12 onwards, he says, Brethren, do not be surprised as if something strange is happening when you must face the fiery ordeal. Because he says, among the many things, that when you suffer for the name of Christ, the spirit of glory, the spirit of God will rest on you. Friends, it is very significant that it is St. Peter who writes such deep and meaningful and rich lessons on suffering. When we look among the 12 disciples, we know that all of them would abandon Jesus, but three of them failed quite miserably. Judas betrayed Jesus, betrayed his own master. Thomas doubted the Lord. Peter denied Jesus. Now, when you look at these three outstanding examples of failure, in fact, it is Peter's failure that is really striking. Peter denied Jesus not once, but thrice. And what is most striking about his denial is just hours before this, Peter would declare that he would be faithful to Jesus even if others fall away. At the Last Supper, when Jesus says, all of you will abandon me and one of you will betray me, Peter, as they say, pride goes before a fall and we see Peter taking the stance of pride, you know, the first among the Christians, the first among the disciples, like very many people who would claim that they are better Christians because they are more learned, they are more trained, they belong to a pious organization or maybe they belong to a particular denomination or a particular rite. So we know that any such exaltation is definitely not of the Spirit of Christ. So here Peter says, though all may have their faith shaken in you, I will be with you. Even if I must go to my death with you, I will be faithful and I will stand. So friends, a few hours right after this, Peter denies Jesus. Now, when we look at the event of the denial, it seems something impulsive. He is afraid of suffering. He realizes that if he acknowledges that he is associated with Jesus, he could get arrested. He could face some kind of struggle and persecution. And in merely what we see as a move of self-preservation, Peter denies Jesus. Now, when we look closely at the gospel, this triple denial of Peter is but in fact the third instance where he denies Jesus. The very first instance we read in Matthew chapter 16, when Jesus predicts his suffering, his passion and his death. Now, immediately we hear Peter turning to Jesus saying, God forbid, Lord, that nothing that you say shall happen to you. In fact, the gospel writer says that Peter rebukes Jesus for speaking about suffering. And we know that right then and there, Jesus turns to him and says, get behind me, Satan. The second instance is during the arrest of Jesus. The whole coterie of soldiers have come to arrest Jesus. And that is when Peter, it is says, takes out his sword and cuts off the ear of Malchus, who is the high priest's slave. Jesus immediately turns to him and rebukes him, tells him, put your sword back into the scabbard. Should I not be able to drink the cup the father has given for me? Now, when we look at all these three instances, when Peter stands in opposition to Jesus, to the will of God for Jesus, to suffering, to the cross, we realize that to oppose suffering is to oppose the way of God. To reject suffering is to reject Christ himself. Now, strangely, 
the human preoccupation is to avoid suffering. Think about this. Every one of us, when we hear of suffering, we would hope and pray that we would not have to face such suffering. We count ourselves blessed when we are spared of a certain suffering. When we hear that, oh, there was an earthquake and so many people died, but one person survived, we say, oh, this person is blessed. We have a very distorted understanding of what is blessedness. We have devised addictions and pleasures only to anesthetize ourselves from the reality of suffering. We are ready to slip into crooked ways of sin in order to avoid the path of suffering. And so we see invariably the alternative to suffering is crookedness and addiction and selfishness. And here is where a famous Catholic writer, French Catholic writer, Francois Mauriac, he says, it is not for us to detach ourselves from the cross. Well, as they said to Jesus, if you are the son of God, come down from the cross. We know that Jesus refused to come down to the cross, though it was possible for him to do that. And so also every one of us, Though there are voices around us demanding that we come down from the cross, that we avoid our sufferings, it is not for us to detach ourselves from the cross because it is the cross that defines our person. It is a cross that defines our life. It is a cross that defines our Christianity. Friends, these words are not merely poetic. This is the truth. Remember Jesus says, if anyone wishes to be my disciple, they need to take up their cross and follow me. Yes, the only criteria to be a disciple and the one true qualification and excellence of a disciple is in the cross. Jesus also tells us that the only way to heaven is the narrow path. The path of suffering where we are crushed, where we are broken, so much so that we can even pass through the eye of the needle. Now, having spoken so much about suffering, we must look to ourselves and see, what must I do to follow Jesus? Is it merely about avoiding certain foods that are pleasurable? In fact, Jesus says, you have a daily cross. There are circumstances in our life that are painful and Jesus says, take it up, embrace it. And how do we do this? You know, the Greeks were famous for their philosophy of stoicism. And this was to look at suffering and joy as two sides of the coin and to detach ourselves so that we are not affected by suffering. Well, friends, not only is such an attitude difficult, it is also very superficial. It is about submitting to another form of deception. When we have suffering, we need to be able to enter that suffering, not avoid that suffering by dismissing it in our mind by some mind game. We look at Jesus and it says, when he looked at all that Calvary would mean for him, the abandonment of his disciples, the false condemnation, the sufferings, the passion, the death. It is said in Matthew chapter 26 that Jesus was sorrowful unto death. Jesus experienced sorrow right to the depth of his heart. And how does he handle suffering? It says he goes to the Father and prays incessantly. Repeatedly, he cries out to the Abba Father saying, let this cup pass from me, yet not my will, but thy will be done. We look at Peter. We know most famously of Peter's three denials. But are we aware of Peter's three proclamations? I'm going to take you back. In Matthew chapter 16 again, we see Jesus asking his disciples, tell me, who do you say that I am? And Peter is the one who would rise up to say, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. This great proclamation 
was a proof that Peter was one who was open to the revelation of God. And Jesus there would tell him, you Peter are the rock, on you the church would be built. The second occasion is a very interesting occasion when Peter looks at Jesus walking on the water. And what does he do? He wants to walk on the water. And Jesus in his generosity invites him. But even as Peter is walking on the water, and beginning to walk on the water, he looks around and his fears overwhelm him. He begins to drown and he cries out, Jesus, save me. Well, what's so great about it? Friends, the fact that when he knew he was not enough for himself, he turned to Jesus, seeking the Lord to save him, seeking the Lord to be his savior. The third occasion we're all most familiar with is when the risen Lord takes him aside and asks him, Peter, do you love me more than these? And we see Peter declaring it three times over, Lord, you know, you know that I love you. You know that I love you above everything else. And it is here that Jesus tells him, tend my sheep, feed my sheep, tend my flock. Friends, it is looking at the models of Jesus and of Simon Peter that you and I can indeed learn how to take up the cross and follow the Lord. Follow how the Lord suffered so that this suffering we have will lead us to salvation and glory. It is no surprise that Peter would follow Jesus and suffer with Jesus and suffer for Jesus would write the most beautiful words on suffering. So when we look at what the Gospels present before us, we see when we have suffering, firstly, as Jesus did, turn to prayer. Reach out to the Heavenly Father like a little child. Express the pain of the heart. Express your struggle when the flesh demands that you seek comfort and specifically seek the Lord to have His way, for His will to be done. Secondly, declare and call on the name of Jesus as your Savior. When Peter said, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, he was blessed. And scripture says that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will not be disappointed. Those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Like St. Peter, we need to cry out to the Savior in our moments of struggle and suffering. In those moments of emergency, just call on Jesus. When the way is too difficult for you, just call on the name of Jesus. You may not have many words. You may be in the midst of a tough situation, but repeat the name of Jesus. And finally, as the Lord himself would direct Peter, offer yourself for the proclamation of the word of God. Jesus told Peter, tend my sheep. When we offer our sufferings, offer our talents, offer whatever we have to spread the good news of Jesus, we will find that even as we walk through this earth, our sufferings will bear fruit and we will, as St. Peter assures us, rejoice that we have a share in the sufferings of Christ because as Christ is revealed to us, we shall share in his glory. Friends, the way to blessedness, the way to glory is to share in the sufferings of Christ. Jesus celebrate Celebrate Jesus celebrate Celebrate Jesus celebrate Celebrate Jesus celebrate He is risen He is risen 
Celebrate Jesus. of our celebration. Let us all raise our hands and praise our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We celebrate you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, almighty King, for you are the risen Lord. You have defeated death. You are risen to save us to this day. You have risen to bring light into our life. You have risen to heal those of us who are sick. You have risen to wipe the tears of the sad. You have risen to bless us. Oh God, we praise you. For you are a God who is alive for us. You live for us. You live to save us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Our God dwells in the praises of his people. Let us celebrate our God. Let us celebrate in faith. For he is a God who dwells in our praises. Celebrate Jesus. I cannot but celebrate you, my God. For you have chosen me to be in your presence. And no matter who or what goes against me or challenges my decision to praise you, even if I must look like a fool, Lord, I have decided. The world behind me the cross before me. Though none go with me, I will follow. Today we want to make a decision that we will praise our God. We will celebrate life and we will celebrate Jesus. We will celebrate our faith and we will walk the way of the faith even if the world is behind us. We're making a decision before God. We're making a decision to celebrate Him. The world behind me. The world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. 
No turning no back. No turning back. No turning back. No none go with me. No none go with me. Still I will follow. No none go with me. Still I will follow. No none go with me. Still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. Oh, take the whole world. Take the whole world. But give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Oh, take the whole world, but give me Jesus. Oh, take the whole world, but give me Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The Lord is asking you, He wants to come and dwell in you. Jesus says, abide in me and I will abide in you. This is the Lord standing at the door of your life and we need to open that door. If there's anything that is preventing God from coming into our life, we are telling God, God, come Lord Jesus. Come, Lord, and take your place in my life. Welcome the Holy Spirit into your life. We want the power of God to take over us. We want a God, oh God, today it is you, Lord. My heart, my, my, my body, my home, my family, my workplace. Whatever I do today, Lord, with my computer, on the social media, in my job, God, I want your Holy Spirit to guide me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Live inside of me. Oh, welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. You're the living waters. You're the living water, the never drying fountain, never drying fountain, comforter and counselor, comforter and counselor. Oh, take complete control, take complete control. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your power. Live inside of 